Hello and um, today's video is about a CRM 2011 dialogue and custom workflow example. This was a bit of functionality I had to uh, do uh, last week and uh, it was kind of an interesting uh, process so I thought I would um, write a blog and do a video about it sort of show you how I tackled it. So we'll start with um, what the, the uh, customer wanted. They wanted a, it was with appointments and they wanted some functionality where they could cancel lots of appointments, multiple appointments basically, and uh, give a reason for the cancellation of these appointments. So they specified like a start date and an end date and then you cancel all the appointments in between them and would give a sort of a, a choice of uh, reasons for cancellation. So initially, when I thought about this, I thought, okay, workflows, you can, um, workflows allow you to sort of select multiple uh, records and then kind of fire off a workflow which will run on each and in each individual record. That would be a solution, apart from the fact that they wanted a uh, reason behind, and they wanted to choose from a bunch of reasons to sort of for cancelling those appointments in the, in the appointments in our scenario they were kind of bookable so you could book some of the appointments or they were booked and they wanted uh, to cancel cancel the booked and make not available the bookable ones so when I realized that kind of workflows weren't an option we then moved on to dialogues and I hadn't done too much dialogue work before then I just done a little bit a little play around with it and uh, dialogues are quite weird they're a bit like sort of upside down workflows they work similar to workflows but yet very different and takes you a little bit of time to get used to them really um, so I was doing a bit of R&D with this my main plan was to kind of do a dialogue collect a few uh, like dates date start date end date and the reason and then uh, pass this off to a CWA, so a custom workflow, not sure what the A stands for, custom workflow, and then from there I could do some uh, .NET kind of code to cancel the workflows. But I found that dialogues don't work on multiple objects, dialogues only run on one object, so I couldn't run them on a group of um, appointments, I could only run them on one at a time so this didn't really uh, deliver what we wanted so what we did then was move this sort of trigger so to the contact so the person who was sort of available for these appointments so I moved it to them the contact and then from there we could cancel all the uh, appointments sort of linked to that uh, contact it's interesting actually I never with custom workflows, I've never really quite seen uh, the reason for them because mainly most of the code I write is usually triggered from a plugin, and I wasn't really sure in what scenario. And I think I was asked a, uh, an interview question with this once: what scenario really you'd, I'd want to use a custom workflow instead of a, a plugin? But this sort of highlights a good re, a good opportunity to use a custom workflow because. In this scenario, there isn't a natural trigger for a plugin because nothing's being updated yet. And also, if I was to do a sort of plugin, I'd have to kind of write the values down somewhere onto either the contact and then kind of pick them up from my plugin. Uh, this didn't wasn't really what I wanted. So a custom workflow operated well because I could call it from within. You can call it from within other workflows or um, a dialogue in this case and then I could also pass in some uh, fields or variables and then I, my uh, custom workflow could use those to uh, you know cancel the appointments in this case so that was a, a good example of using a custom workflow so and I did a bit of an R&D and then initially I just made a simple dialogue passed the variables to um, my custom workflow and that seemed to work so I kind of moved on at this point I've reread the requirements and I found there was a little tricky 
part to do with the time. They basically wanted a date, so you have a start date and an end date, but the time specified, so if they specified nine in the more nine and then to like one o'clock, they wanted to cancel every, each day the appointment from nine to one o'clock and leave the afternoon ones available. So the sort of it wasn't quite a start and end time, it was a start and end time for each day. So that added a little bit more cheekiness to the problem. So this also presented a problem the fact that I couldn't use a date and time now because um, they didn't they wanted to specify a date and then show the time not quite linked. They didn't want to show the, the time next to it as well. They wanted to sort of show it as a start as a time to start and a time to end. So um, I had to do it not a date and time. So I had a date to begin with. So here's my uh, um, dialogue. So I had a start date, which is just your bog standard start date. Uh, date only, there we go. Um, so there's nothing special about that one. And I had an end date, then I had a start time. Now they also wanted the fact that if we didn't specify a start time, that it would select all day. So to get around this, I made an option set and I, the initial value was um, zero, which meant if I didn't select anything, I would select zero and I would assume that is all day. Um, I, I will mention here that I, <laughs> that cost me a bit of time that when, when you're doing dialogues and you set the data type, you have to be very careful because once you set it, you cannot unset it. So initially I chose this to be text and then I didn't re I tried to pass it into a sort of int value in my custom workflow and it didn't work because it was a string. Um, so I had to do it all again. To do the time, basically I did a label so there's an option set and a label and the value basically one one has the value of one two has the value of two three thirteen th so basically when I pass in a start time that I know that the number is the hours uh, so it took a bit of pain dialogues are also a bit painful because you can't use an option set we may have created inside CRM on a field, you have to sort of create them again and then convert them. So if you were kind of setting a field on a, a record, like an option set, you, you can set it using this, but you can't use the same one. So that's a bit of a painful <laughs> experience. Um, in dialogues, I'll explain a little bit. You have uh, pages, and in a page you get a prompt and response. So you you'll prompt something you'll offer some text and then you collect the response back. So in here I'm collecting a date, another date, this is an option set, and then I have another option set. And then also I had cancellation reason. This is basically I copied um, a field in CRM and I basically gave the uh, values the same as uh, the option set values inside that field so I could just get that and assign it straight to um, the uh, straight to the option set and it will be the same value but I, that does mean you have to recreate them all and this means that they'll be out of sync so if I added another field another option set value into the one I'm writing to I have to also remember to do it in this dialogue because they're not synced up in any way so that's a, another bit of a gotcha so when I showed them this, another a question they had was, um, we want to warn, warn users that if they're making changes to uh, appointments with less than three days, so basically if I'm running today and I'm cancelling today's, tomorrow's, or the next day, um, that we should warn them because basically if you cancel them this late, there's no way, there's no time to rearrange these appointments. Um, you can't get messages out to the the appointee coming person coming in for the appointment 
And so basically we need to say, are you sure you want to do this? Um, and get a message. And they were initially saying this and they had like a pop-up. And I was just thinking, I can't see how you can do a pop-up in a dialogue. There's no, there doesn't seem to be any uh, kind of functionality that does that. Um, so we are thinking about it and then the project manager said, well, why don't we just have another page and then on here, we'll get them to confirm what they've done before. So that is how you do kind of pop-ups in dialogues. Here, basically, I, I kind of, um, I put in the fact that they're cancelling some appointments, give the start date and the end date, and then say, if you want, if this is the correct, you, you mean to do this, press yes. Um, and the default values no. So if they don't do anything, it won't do it. And so they have to do a response to sort of confirm that they want to save this. And then I just have a, a little check condition which checks if they have pressed one, then we run the uh, bulk appointment status change. And so here you can see my, um, this is the sort of the calling of my see um, custom workflow and I'm passing in the responses I captured earlier I'm passing them in here and there's the contact should also say actually at this point that make sure you give your variables decent uh, names because you you might need to sort of refer to them later and so you need to give them logical names so like start date end date start time because later on you'll see them in the like the drop down and you'll be if you've got lots then if you haven't named them very well you'll be wondering which one to pick so if we have a look so there this is the blog to go with my video so here is the um the code for a custom workflow, we uh, extend code activity, which is a bit like this is like the kind of plugin version of the the plugin code that you have to extend. Um, and here you can see that you you have to create these. You don't have to create them, but these are if you're going to pass variables in, you put them as input. And say so that that's what it's called, and this is a required one. So they're most of they're all required here. And you put an in argument. They can be in out as well. Um, so the mine's a date time, and that's a start date. Then I have my end date. They, those two are date times, but I'm only collecting a date from them. The time is uh, zeros, and then for my ta start time is an int and another int, uh, and then finally I pass in sort of contact there. So I'm just kind of putting a bit of a, I collect the, the times here and then I input them out to some logging just so I was doing, doing that whilst I was checking the code. Um, and basically I kind of take all those variables and then call uh, another piece of a class I make there, pass in a kind of internet CRM service so I can write to uh, the database contact and then the start date end date and oh, it's not shown all of them. there you go and so just pass in all those to another thing um, so there's one interesting bit of code a little bit here is that the start time so here I if the start time is greater than zero so I know zero is a whole day so if it's zero I um, just make it the date so it's that's zero and then if, it, if the end date is zero I uh, make it 23.59 so I get basically get the whole day there if it's zero if it's not zero and they've specified a time I I get I specify the date there and then I add the hours in the start time which we know is um, basically the same value int as the hours they've selected so start date and then just add the hours on so if it was like nine then it would be nine in the morning and then end time I do the same 
So the one tricky bit I had to do here was um, to do with this kind of a time value. They wanted to cancel like all the morning appointments or all the afternoon appointments. I was thinking of doing it in one S one uh, fetch XML statement. I couldn't quite work out. I wasn't quite comfortable doing it and then like specifying each day. It would seem a bit uh, tricky to do it like that. So what I did is I created, um, I basically called round for each day. So I got the two days, start and end date. I calculate the number of days and then I set the end date to be the start date plus the correct hours. So basically what I'm doing is I'm collecting each day. So if it and the hours in between there, um, and then I do a query which uses those two dates. It adds it to this uh, like a list of appointments, and it just adds the range on. And then after I do that, I add a day to each one, and it goes round until the counter is uh, equal to days, and then I stop. So that's the way I kind of got round that. So I basically get the start time and then make the hours correct and then just loop around the number of days we've got. So that was my uh, adventure with dialogues and a CWA. Just thought I would uh, do a little video to show you how I went about it. Thank you very much.